Okay, friends, now we have with us Mohammed Ninawi, who is an American theologian scholar and a medical doctor based in Atlanta, Georgia. He is the founder of the Islamic seminary, Medina Institute globally, which includes a center for non-violence and peace studies. So welcome, Mohammed. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's a great honor to be here today. And I think, uh, let me pick up where uh, many of you also have uh, sort of either left off or touched on, I think, an emphasis on realizing the absolute need uh, as, a, uh, uh, as a human family today, one of our greatest challenges, if not the greatest challenge that we face as a human family is peace and nonviolence. If we fail to create the necessary changes in our personal and collective thinking about how best to live alongside one another in harmony, in peace, in unconditional compassion and safety, and obviously with mutual respect, then we will fail in everything. We will fail ourselves and we will certainly fail the generations to come. And I think irrespective then of our uh, religious background or credo or cultural, we haven't just failed ourselves, but we also then have betrayed our faith traditions. And therefore, I think we can and we must not only we can, we should also think intelligently and deeply together about alternatives to the delusion that keeps uh, surfacing that violence and war are arguable solutions to human problems. Uh, that increased conflict is an acceptable path to prosperity, economic prosperity, or it's an acceptable path to peace. That destruction is an actual means to construction. And, and you see that argument over and over and over where we need to destroy to build. We need to do, to, it's, sort of like, it's sort of like saying we need to kill to give life. But once you kill, how can you give life? We need to achieve our uh, uh, personal happiness alongside with others. And I think that's the call of the day because it's difficult or it's impossible, spiritually speaking, and, and in, from a human perspective, that uh, we will actually achieve personal happiness while so many in our world suffer violence and conflict and wars. Uh, and obviously all the attached miseries uh, that come along with it. And we see it lately now in the Russian uh, and Ukrainian violence that's going on with the world just siding on one side or the other. And the, prop, the victims will always be the people in many of these uh, big games, just like the, just like the violence that was out in the Middle East in the past 10 years, let's say, that was called the Arab Spring, uh, in Libya, Syria, Yemen, et cetera, et cetera. I think we need, as people of, uh, uh, who are committed, let's say, to nonviolence and peace, who are committed to our shared oneness as a human family, we need to release ourselves and also spread that release from the pessimism that runs so deep in our cultures and veins oftentimes whispering to us that there will always be wars irrespective of what we do in our homes, in our communities and between nations and tribes. I think dare to dream is the first step and obviously work. The call is whatever your faith is and culture, Whatever the belief system is, I think it's important for all of us. And whether we're teaching our students or we're spreading and we're talking that message with people to all become contemplatives, meditatives, students, teachers, visionaries, instruments, and activists of nonviolence. Oftentimes, and 
you all are experts in the field, but I mean, oftentimes people perceive nonviolence as passivism. And it's exactly the opposite. It's exactly an all out effort to do so selflessly do the best you can. Uh, and I hear that as a call to love far more and far less conditionally to be far bolder in our hopes for our world and for one another uh, to achieve the safety, the well-being, and the nonviolence, the peace we are now daring to dream. And I don't think anything else could matter more at this point. Uh, we may have been blinded by many things that are around us, um, but I think in all of us, there is that light of vision, light of love, light of the longing for peace inside it from an inner perspective and from an outer perspective. And to see every human being on the planet as our sister and brother, as they truly are, and to love our neighbors uh, as many faith systems, if not all faith systems articulate in so many ways, and to love even our opponents, and to learn that at the end, we are all, we may be different colors, different ethnicities, different creeds, different languages, different backgrounds, but at the end of the day, we are all one. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, teaches us that in the hadith where he says, or in the prophetic tradition where he says, Kullukum li Adam wa Adam min turab, which means again, you may be different colors, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, but at the end of the day, you are one people. That one people, oftentimes simply because of what happens in the world, the reality that the power struggles and the, uh, uh, I call it the sin of all sins, the arrogance that leads us to be greedy, that leads us to have envy, that leads us to have unrestrained ambition that is willing to uh, trample the rights of others. Uh, that blindedness that makes us think our rights are more important than anybody else and our feelings and perception uh, that is based on a lower nafs desire, uh, desires are more pertinent than other people, <clears throat> I think that may give us some discouragement. And um, whenever I get discouraged by people's actions or by what let's say religious establishments sometimes do or figures or people in general or those who take places of responsibility and leadership. I recall how much trouble Moses, Jesus and Muhammad السلام, how much trouble they were in and how much trouble they had to go through fighting all kinds of wars that were imposed on them, uh, racism uh, that was integral in their society, um, and weapons of mass destruction at their time. And, and their, their vision to change these weapons of mass destruction to weapons of mass construction. And, and I think that was the call of the day and how they stayed put remained consistent, uh, persevered in faith, and did the best they could based on the circumstances and carried on. So uh, I take heart from Prophet Moses. I take heart from Prophet Jesus. And I take heart from Prophet Muhammad السلام, because they have endured it all with love. And that's the challenge with a good heart. And now we see that uh, uh, the results of their work, the light is always st still there and the fruits are always there. And we just need to find them, search for them and then provide them that opportunity. I think we can all find new strength and courage from role models we have 
uh, in our different faith or traditional systems uh, to carry on and be faithful in our service to the creator and creation. I, I like to think of, uh, uh, and we have it in, in, in the Quran, which is really uh, the beginning of revelation is compassion. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it says. So I look at it as a revelation of compassion. And as a revolution, though I have my own preservation on the word revolution, but a revolution of love. And maybe I would like to call it the passion for compassion. The passion for compassion. And if we can share that with, with ourselves to transform ourselves and also with people around us to convince them. And I understand it's not easy. And I understand it takes sometimes years, sometimes decades of actually willing to be refined, to be refined and polished. But we are all capable. And that's the beauty. We all have that seed of love, if you are to say, that root of unconditional compassion within us. We all are equipped with it. We just need to activate it. And I think that from a point of faith, I would like, and oftentimes we are involved in interfaith, we're involved in many, in many uh, uh, activities. And I think everyone in their own ways, but we need to invite humanity to become more meditative and more uh, contemplative of love, unconditional compassion, and nonviolence. From a, uh, from a point of faith, uh, our whole life is based on prayer, on reflection, on contemplation. But we need to understand also, even from a religious perspective, that such prayer, such contemplation, such reflection, such mysticism cannot be to go dominate others or the world for that, but so that we can connect. The whole point is that we can then connect with the living creator of all, the living creator of all. Many practicing religious people spend their whole, spend their whole lives praying by telling the creator of all what to do. They tell God what to do. And oftentimes when that doesn't happen, they become very upset with God, the very God they believe in for not making the world uh, the way they like. And for people who have been slightly more improved uh, for not making the world a better place. Those who feel that they've been now advanced a little bit. So it's not about them as much they figured hey, they're upset with God. Why didn't he make the world a better place? But you all know that's not the way we speak with the all-wise, all-loving creator of all, and certainly not the way that we speak to someone we love. Prayer is about a relationship with the all-loving creator of all. Therefore, it needs to incorporate silent, active listening as a form of prayer, which is what I'm calling here for when we talk about meditative nonviolence. We need to have that meditation about nonviolence, and oftentimes it has to include silent, active listening, because you all know prayers, contemplation, meditation, adoration, connectedness means entering into the pres presence of the creator of all. Uh, for me and for many of you as well, it may mean uh, dwelling in the nonviolence and unconditional compassion realm of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. In other words, the spiritual life begins with meditative, unconditional compassion, meditative nonviolence, that every one of us is called to be a spiritual wayfarer and ambassador of unconditional compassion, ambassador of nonviolence to the creation. So in, in prayer, we turn to the creator of all. We enter the presence of the one who loves us all, Ar-Rahman uh, Ar-Rahim, and uh, that, that's the name in Arabic, and who disarms our hearts. That's the whole point of, the, of dhikr, we call it in, in Islam, or of meditation, 
disarming our hearts of our inner violence and transforms us into people of prophetic unconditional compassion and then sends us on a mission disarming love unconditional compassion and creative compassion let's call it creative nonviolence through meditation or dhikr as we call it we learn to surrender in an engaged way to the creator of all it's not passive engaged surrendering it's engaged surrendering we actively surrender our inner violence and our resentments to grant clemency and forgiveness to everyone, to move from anger and revenge and violence to compassion, mercy, love, and nonviolence, to move from deception to being transparent so that we radiate personally the peace and the nonviolence we seek socially and politically and economically. Otherwise, from a point of, of faith, you all know we always radiate that which we harbor in us, irrespective of our words. And many people who have not been in this in the spiritual sort of practices, they misread that. They think that uh, saying things and doing things while not having them in masks that reality. Never, never. But people of, uh, who are in that, in, in that progress of refinement understands that they simply choose to give forgiveness and clemency and bypass it. In the end, I think from a point of faith, peace and nonviolence are just like love. And they are, that means they're all a gift from the creator of all. And I, I always tell myself and students as well that we, we need to, actively seek that gift uh, if we are addicted to violence resentments hate lack of transparency we need to turn to the creator of all confess our all these things support one another through communities of cooperation servitude that's selfless and unconditional compassion and nonviolence basically becoming sober people sober people of peace and creative nonviolence. And the chief difference from a point of faith, again, between violence and nonviolence to many thinkers is that violence depends completely on its own calculations. What's in it for me? It's a very selfish point of looking, if you want to call it arrogant point of, of calculating. However, unconditional compassion, nonviolence depend entirely on the creator of all. It's a gift. In other words, blessed are those who channel love after they've embraced it. Uh, so I, I think because uh, 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 we take examples from uh, the, uh, the, the Quran, the, the Bible, the Torah, and uh, in the Quran, Allah says, the creator of all says, uh, which means the creator of all gives, grants all the just and the unjust from the giving of your Lord. For the giving of the creator of all is never restricted. It doesn't depend on the recipient. It's always based on the generosity and the unconditional compassion of the giver, all right? And the creator of all is merciful unto all. And that's a lesson for all of us, I think, that we should be too. And this is really the heart of a reflective or meditative uh, nonviolence, or if you want, or meditative compassion, because we need to move from simply articulating what compassion and nonviolence is to actual active act to activate that that term by uh, reflection and actually meditation properly and continuously, uh, then we're able to see everyone as a human being, and then we're able to see and recognize that the creator of the creator is the creator of all. Um, <laughs>
Sheikh Nanoe, I'm I'm sorry, I'm, I'm hoping that you can wrap up in, in about a minute. Is that okay? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. We'll do that. Um, I think the great problem is uh, our, we all have a, a duty to realize the deep need, need to connect with our soul, if I may say so. The deep need to be, to surrender actively to the all loving, all merciful creator of all. And I think with that, uh, we can uh, go places and whatever our background is, I think maybe the call that I need to continuously become better and improve. I think that's a call uh, that we can all participate in. Uh, uh, you know, uh, everything is obviously uh, emptiness without love and compassion. Thank you so much. And I wish you a very uh, a great day and, and a guided day and a blessed day. Jake Nanawi, thank you so much. I, I, I love listening to you because I always hear new things in what you say. Uh, I like this construction of, I'm not sure about weapons, but, but weapons of mass construction as opposed to destruction. I love that term of passion for compassion. Um, I think there's just so much always that I, I learn when I listen to you. So thank you. Thank you so very much.